All right, everyone. I am in the process of installing my rigid collar kit um, on the front, which I noticed there is a write-up for it, but there's nothing actually like a video to watch on how to install them. Um, I'm gonna try to cover everything. If I miss something, feel free to like note it down in the comments. I'll try to answer as best as possible. But um, this is just like a basic walkthrough on how to do it. Um, I'm the only one recording and doing this, so I'm gonna try to like show you a couple things, do it, and then recap. Um, if you're wondering why oh, my car is so dirty, it's actually um, in the process of getting the whole suspension rebuilt. And I would have washed it uh, before I started this, but we were having some like really bad weather and it just wasn't working out so well and I just wanted to start on it. So uh, it does definitely need a bath, but um, has all new suspension on it. Um, if you guys want to take a look at that. Uh, got my drill and slot of rotors, calipers. The arm right here is dirty because I reused it, but as you see, new strut, sway bar links, um, tie rod, that um, um, control arm's new, uh, lower control arm's um, replaced it recently, uh, uh, sway bar has new bushings on it, that's just the front, and then over here on the rear, I have um, dust shields deleted. Uh, drill and slider rotors again. I didn't need to take off the dust shields, but mine were all bent to shit because I got these spindles secondhand because I needed new spindles because the pushing up on here was shot on mine. Um, but as you can see, new strut, um, new arms all the way around, like pretty much every arm back here. Actually, every arm except for the lower control arm is brand new. Lower control arm I actually did order, but they sent me the wrong one. So I'm like, yeah, well, this one actually seemed like it was still in good condition. All the other arms were. A little worn, but just went ahead and reused the bottom control arms. Like I said, the bushings seem fine and everything. Um, new um, sway bar bushings and links. This is actually a uh, 2012 subframe uh, installed right now. I'm actually this is an 09 car, uh, first gen. It was actually produced probably um, like one of the very first batches that got released. Um, but 2012 subframe, 09. Um, as you can see in the back, I already did um, install the rigid collar kits in the back. Can't really see it too well. You can kind of see it in there. A little bit of blue in there. So they, they are installed. Uh, the rear, um, there's plenty of videos on like the coupes on how to install them. You basically just take the two bolts out up here, take that bolt out. Now, like I said, I, was, I swapped my subframe for a 2012, and you're probably wondering why. Uh, it's because um, the bushings, the differential bushings, and these corner bushings on mine were pretty well worn. And basically, whenever I stopped, the car could like booty wiggle a little bit, and I didn't like that. So, uh, went around looking for new bushings and everything, and ended up just getting a whole new subframe just because apparently these bushings aren't really common to go bad, but I live on pretty shit roads. So, unfortunately, they did go bad on mine, um, and I haven't. Come across anyone that makes aftermarket um, subframe bushings they make the differential bushings but for the same price they're about like 500 bucks for a full differential bushing um, kit versus i got the subframe for i think 300 bucks and it came with all the bushings inside of it already from a newer vehicle uh had i think underneath 100k i think 87,000. it was from a wrecked one but the wreck was on the front so it's fine um but yeah, uh, for the collar kits, see, I already did the rear. These are the front ones. As you'll notice, there is uh, five right here. Uh, it's because I already have one kind of uh, in the process of being installed. I figured I'd stop while I, before I got too far ahead and start recording because, like I said, I noticed that there's nothing on the sedan uh, for changing up the um, while installing the collars. So let's go ahead and zoom in on that. So that, that's the collar kit right there. This is the unmarked one. There's gonna be a, a whole bunch of them with R's on them. Uh, and then this guy has an R, and this one has an F, I believe, yeah, F. So the blank and the F, they go in specific spots. These R ones are all the same generics, so these don't matter too much, but there are six of them. Uh, like I said, I already have one inside the car. So uh, the first bolt location, so the caliper's right here, uh, is gonna be on the driver's side rear. And it's going to be this guy right here, right next to your uh, sway bar bushing. I already took the splash shields off and everything, so uh, you might have splash shields you got to remove. This isn't going to cover that, but 
Uh, that's the first one right there. The second one you're actually gonna be able to see from right inside the wheel well. Um, it's actually gonna be right here. Um, see how this, this wire comes around and comes down? Uh, this is the second one right here, which I already loosened up a little bit. And then uh, the third one is gonna be right underneath this corner right here. So right there, under, and you'll start to see it. Hold on, give me a second. Crawl myself underneath there. We have fire ants here, so I'm not sure if you know what those are, but little red ants that bite you if you, you know, lay on them. So, all right, so uh, the third one is going to be um, basically right in the front. So here's your little lip thing on the bottom. And then you see like this arm comes from the spindle to the front. And then right next to it, you'll see that one, which is the third one. And then it's the same on the other side, so uh, one, another one right over there um, by the spindle, and then the third one's behind it, just like on the other side. So I already cracked them all loose. You basically want to like loosen it and then tighten it back up to where uh, it's holding the subframe, but it's not actually like completely torqued down the spec. It's just basically uh, hand tighten in there. Um, I do have the jack on the subframe in the back. Uh, with a little bit of pressure plying up, I do also have a jack stand on the back subframe um, holding it in case like I lifted too much in the front, that's going to catch it. Uh, it is on four jack stands, so five in total jack stands. And then the jack right here in the front, just like I said, applying a little bit of upwards pressure uh, just so the subframe doesn't shift around while I'm installing the collars. Um, so yeah, definitely put this in first before you crack any of the bolts loose. Put the jack in, jack it up. Uh, if you're wondering what that jack stand over there is not actually doing anything, I just have it around just in case I might need it. Um, but there's no real good place to put it that's centered. And I don't want to put it to one side in case the subframe does sag or anything like that. I don't need it to be off center. So uh, I'm not using that jack stand, just the jack right here in the center um, with a little bit of upwards pressure. And like I said, make sure you have that back jack stand back there as well to catch it. Um, just in case you lift too much in the front, you lift off these front jack stands with the car tip back. So you don't want that. So make sure you have that back jack stand holding the subframe um, and then yeah go ahead and crack all six bolts loose and then this back uh, driver side one is the one you're gonna be working on first so you can find it again here this guy right here so this is gonna be the one that you're gonna work on first and I am following the write-up right now um, on the Genesis owner forms um, but um, like I said as I go I'll make updates and show you guys what I did next all right, so I might not have mentioned that um, in the previous clip, but uh, I am using a half inch um, 19 millimeter socket. The 19, at least on my vehicle, an 09, uh, this fits all six volts. Um, so I'm gonna use this in combination with this Milwaukee Impact. Uh, I use the Impact just for breaking the bolts loose, uh, and it shouldn't take much at all, just a couple like um, zaps and the bolts will come out and then I just uh, used it basically in drill mode not impact mode and snugged, uh, snugged um, all the other um, bolts up back up after they broke loose just so they're broken loose but they're still technically um, holding the subframe up where it's supposed to be. Um, so once you get the bolt out um, I'd recommend cracking it loose and then using your hand to turn it out the rest of the way. And then once you do have the bolt out, uh, you can take that unmarked collar. Uh, this is the rear driver's side um, calipers right here. So the unmarked one goes right inside there. Uh, with the bolt out, I recommend putting the collar in, uh, in the hole without the bolt. And then uh, if it doesn't want to go in like super easily, uh, don't force it. But what I found uh, was um, a socket. This is a like 15, 16 socket. Um, you can use really any socket as long as it um, sits around the collar nicely. And I just gave it a, a couple small taps just to uh, guide it in a little easier. Like I said, this shouldn't use a lot of force. You don't want to bend the collars or anything. Uh, it's just a couple taps just to get it in there. And then once the collar was in there, I took the bolt and slid it through the opening. Uh, and then uh, proceeded to hand tighten it uh, as far as I could. And then I did take this uh, 19 mil. Uh, it's an extension and the half inch 
uh, and just basically snugged it up there. It's not tight, it's not torque to spec or anything, it's just snug up onto the collar and the collar is onto the subframe. So that's just how you want the first one. Uh, and then we'll, we'll torque all these down uh, in a um, cross pattern. So this one to the front right, so back left, front right, um, and then uh, back right, um, front left. So, and then we'll do like the, the center ones after. Um, if I if I change it up any, at all, I'll let you guys know once I'm done. Um, but so far, uh, first one's done. Now the next one we're gonna be doing is the F, and that's gonna be uh, passenger side rear. So same location that this one's in, just on the opposite side. That's the one that we're gonna be doing next, this guy. And then the other four, um, those ones should all just be generic, and those are the front ones, the front four. Just the two back ones. Uh, the blank one is the tightest, like, uh, tolerance, so it has like the thinner collar on it that slides in there. Uh, the F, I believe, um, is also a, a similar type deal. Um, but we'll go ahead and install this one next, and then I will recap once we're um, done with it. All right, so I actually um, ended up just doing it all. I'm done now, technically, but um, I'm just gonna give you a recap. Uh, I couldn't really record much, like I said, I'm the only person really being able to do anything. So as you can see, there's a collar there. You got a collar down there. Let's see if I can get you up in here. Yeah, you can, I don't know if you can kind of see. There is a collar up there. So um, all six have the collars now. The only one that really gave me an issue was this guy right here, driver's side middle. It felt like it was like binding up. Um, so... What I ended up doing, because it didn't want, well, the bolt didn't want to go in at all. Um, so first thing I did first is I did this one first, which is driver side rear, and that was the unmarked one. So take it out completely, put the collar in, put the bolt back up. Everything went fine with that one. Uh, passenger side rear is the one that's marked with an F. Um, same process, went fine. Uh, so I'm trying to go in like cross pattern because the write-up, I'm not sure. I'll leave it in the description if you want to follow the write-up as well. Uh, just to have like different um, references. Um, but the write-up only really covers the back ones. And then when you get to the front, uh, it just says to replace all four. <laughs> and then it moves to the back. So it's not really... Like it helped me. Like I got it done. So I, I can't say it wasn't helpful because it was. Um, but it's kind of like not super specific as for how you should do it and how you should tighten it and what the torque spec is now i put mine at 71 foot pounds technically because i wanted it technically i looked this up don't quote me on this i'm not held liable uh for anything if you guys use these torque specs uh it's just what i had found um i went with 71 foot pounds of torque mainly because what i found was that they can be at max 72. So if I went with 71, I usually tend to slightly over tighten stuff. So um, with my torque wrench, uh, when it beeps, mine's a uh, digital one, when it beeps, um, then I would technically uh, look at it and it might be like slightly over a little bit. So um, sometimes it actually got up to 72. So I, I did mine at 71 just in case I didn't over tighten it. So. I put them all at 71 foot pounds, but uh, how I did this, after the first, after the back two are done, uh, you basically want to snug them up, but not too tight. You can snug this back one up uh, a lot tighter than you can on the passenger side. This one supposedly has to stay exactly where it is, so you don't want this one to shift around at all. Uh, so this one can be a little bit tighter. Um, they say hand tight, but uh, if you're like me, um, when it actually got up to the top, uh, it was a little bit of resistance, so you actually had to use like a, a ratchet and you don't want to like strip the threads or like bind it up or anything So if it doesn't feel like it's going at all, don't force it uh, Only if you feel like it actually is still going and it just has a little bit of like tension on it. It's okay But like I said, you don't want to like Force it to go in if it's if it doesn't want to go in because Chances are you're probably putting the bolt in crooked or the threads aren't catching correctly and you don't want to do that. So um so this one first, other side, and then basically you want to tighten this one up a little bit tighter. Uh, the other one can actually stay um, just hand tightened all the way up to the collar, uh, and then a little bit extra. And then what um, the write-up said, which I followed, um, 
to move the jack back. So as you uh, might have seen in the last clip, it was holding up right over there uh, between those two those two holes on up on top of there right there. Sorry, don't mind my dirty hand, but um, so those two holes right up on there in the back of the frame is where the jack was right in the center of those. And then once I finished replacing the two back ones, um, keep in mind you do have to crack all six loose. I cracked all six loose with the jack back there on this jack point right here. So um, once they're all loose and you replace the two back ones, um, you want to make sure that they're loose but not super loose because you don't want the subframe to, to drop when you lower the jack. You do want the subframe to stay where it is. So. Um, you just want to crack it loose and then tighten it back up to where it's still going to hold the subframe where it should be. And then you can uh, very slowly lower your jack. Uh, I didn't physically see the subframe shift at all. And then I slid it back and yes, my um, little support right there is a little rusty. I do need to send it up and uh, paint it just so it doesn't rust. But um, I basically use this as a second point in the front of the subframe to jack it up and then apply a little bit of upwards pressure not a lot just because you don't want the car to tip back but that jack back there should catch it just in case but like I said you don't want to put a whole bunch of pressure upwards because you don't want to shift around the subframe um, you do need to like slightly be able to maneuver um, the subframe and I, when I say maneuver uh, the write-up said to use like a um, what's it called pry bar and some things and pry against the subframe and your unibody and Honestly, I, I I wouldn't do that. I mean, I tried. I do have a, a pry bar when, when I was having issues with this guy right here. Uh, I did try um, to get like a, a nice area to use a pry bar and then move the subframe a little bit. But honestly, it's an easy way to mess stuff up. You might bend like body panels. Not necessarily body panels, but you might bend your subframe. You might bend uh, your frame in like certain areas. And you just don't want to mess with that. So what I found is if you're having issues with this guy right here, uh, I went in cross pattern, which is kind of weird for six, but um, easiest way I did it was uh, driver side, um, rear, passenger side, front, um, and then I came back to driver side middle, um, and then from driver side middle, it went to passenger side middle, to driver side front, to passenger side rear, uh, and that's how I tightened everything up, but once you do replace those two, um, this one wasn't going in, so what I ended up having to do was loosen that back passenger rear up just a little bit more, and that allowed the bolt to actually uh, shift the subframe a little bit while I was tightening it. Like I said, you don't want to bind the threads, you don't want to like mess up anything, but this one definitely was a little bit harder to put in. Um, I don't think it like binded or stripped any threads or messed up the threads at all. It just was a little bit more challenging. I did have to use the impact a little bit. Uh, to drive it up. Um, it was still going by ratchet, but it was a little bit more challenging, so I figured I didn't want to like use a whole bunch of muscle just to get it up in there. So um, I did put the um, impact on it, and I very lightly um, tapped it until it went all the way up inside of it. And then once that one was done, so I actually did, starting with this guy first, driver side rear to the passenger side front back there, uh, to this middle one third, and then from here, I did the passenger side rear, and then driver side front, and then passenger side middle. Um, and I basically got them all snugged up really nicely, and then I torqued them in that order as well to, um, like I said, technically um, the high end. From what I found, don't quote me on this, and I'm not held liable if anything happens with your vehicle. Um, but from what I've researched, um, and I do have some decent, like, sources um they say i believe anywhere from uh 68 to 72 foot pounds so i went with 71 and then like i said if i technically over torqued it a little bit uh it still didn't go over 72 so that that's where i was playing it safe uh, i did it for all six like that uh and now all i gotta do is lower the jack remove the jack stands um, I'm going to be replacing my differential fluid, but that's going to be on another video. Uh, if you do want to see that video, um, be sure to subscribe, um, and then you can check out my channel. Um, it, I, I own this vehicle, so I'll be making probably a couple more videos on it. Um, usually the stuff I can't find when researching is the stuff that 
I'm posting on my channel. Um, there's some other like interior videos and stuff too on how to put stuff on and I didn't really make a video too much about the drill and solder rotors but these are basically just a direct swap on. Uh, you didn't have to remove the dust shields on the rear to um, put them on. The dust shields on the front are still on. Um, but I ended up actually replacing both uh, rear spindles back there. Um, I'll actually show you because um, you might want to check this on yours as well. Uh, where is it? Alright, so these are actually my other spindles um, off the rear. Uh, and what you want to check for on the rear, um, why I replace these, is these bushings right here. Let me get a good picture of it. They tend to blow out. Uh, I already replaced the spindle technically once, and this is already on the second spindle. Uh, it's starting to blow out again, and these are technically, one's original, the other one's off a different vehicle, but uh, the reason why these blow out um, for me was because my struts were blown, and it was putting too much stress on the spindles, and if your rear struts are blown, definitely want to keep an eye on these, because once these go out, it'll actually start to uh, camber out your rear wheels when you put um, pressure on it, so when you step on it, the rear wheel will actually kick out a little bit. And then you'll end up um, basically balding the tire on the inside when it when it squeals and like slides to the side. So you don't want that. Uh, I got two new spindles. Um, again, um, I buy all my stuff. Like well, all my other suspension stuff is brand new, but the spindles they were super expensive, brand new. So I did get two matching ones off of a wrecked vehicle, um, just so that they were matching. I think they had under a hundred thousand miles on them, and they're perfectly fine. Those are the ones I'm running in the rear right now. And as you see, these ones have the dust shields and everything on them still. Um, but they are all bent to shit and not good looking. So I did go ahead and um, replace them on the rear. Well, I replaced the spindles and took the dust shields off. So as you see right there, that's all back together. All the new shiny black stuff in the background because it's all brand new basic here, back here basically. Um, and yeah, the, the the one that blows out right here is this guy right here. Uh, if your struts are blown, then these bushings in here just go to shit. So make sure you keep an eye on that. You don't want those to fall apart. I'm not a professional. Uh, I'm just a do-it-yourself mechanic. Um, obviously, a dealer might do it slightly differently. Um, I don't have a two-post lift. I have jack stands. So, um. Oh, and then in case you guys were wondering, um, I mentioned that I... Um, Swapped out my subframe uh, for a 2012. This is my 2009 um, rear subframe, and for the um, everything bolted up. The only thing that actually gave me issues um, was the sway bar, and the sway bar in the 2010, I believe, starting or the 2011 up um, came with a slightly thicker um, sway bar. So um, the one I had is actually a little bit thinner. The one that they upgraded to is a little bit larger. So what that means is that the brackets where they line up right here uh, on the 2009 uh, they're closer in and on the 2012 one it's actually the bolt holes right back here um, so what I had to do to make my sway bar fit on it was I took the brackets and then I can't really show you I actually had to um, basically take them off and I, I put new bushings in anyway but I uh, took a drill bit and where the bolts go through actually uh, widen the hole um, to the um, the outside of both holes a little bit um, and then both bolts went in perfectly fine um, if for some reason um, I might need to like adjust where the sway bar sits if my alignment doesn't come out correctly I, I might need to like uh, flip the brackets over to move the sway bar fl slightly closer inwards, which I can do. Um, if not, I believe it's supposed to be slightly further back, so that's how I left it. If, like I said, if I do need to bring the sway bar in more to the left, I can flip around the bracket and that will bring the sway bar in more to the left. If not, I might actually um, just splurge and go and get a 2012 sway bar from like an R-Spec or something and just put it on there. Um, so That should just bolt right up. Um, and then in case you guys are wondering um, what suspension I went with, um, I just went OEM, um, 2009, um, struts, front and back, um, I reused my springs, but um, you can use R-Spec suspension, but um, the, from what I was reading, um, the R-Spec suspension is actually closer to the 2009 suspension, um, later 
in the production years, they actually made the suspension softer, um, which is why it's different, because um, they wanted better ride quality for the more, like, average user. They didn't really care about, like, superior, like, s like superb handling. Um, they wanted the ride quality to be a little bit nicer, so uh, they made softer suspension. And um, the R-Spec, the 2012 uh, and up, I believe, actually uses a very similar um, strut, uh, like, setup. I believe it's actually, uh, if I'm not wrong, the same struts, just the only thing that they did was they used different springs, and that basically allowed the car to sit a little bit lower, um, that plus the thicker sway bar. Uh, I've done a lot of research on this. I was actually just going to put 2012 suspension on this, um, but I wanted to reuse my springs, because I'm pretty sure the struts are the same. I would just need to get the R-Spec springs and the thicker sway bar, and that theoretically that should make it identical to the R-Spec, um, as far as I'm aware. I mean, obviously, um, the part numbers might be a little bit differently, um, just because of when they are manufactured. This one was made for the 2009, obviously the 2012 R-Spec stuff was made for the 2012 R-Spec, um, but when you lay them next to each other and compare them, as far as I've done research on, the struts are pretty much identical. And um, the only real difference is the spring and the sway bar in the rear. Uh, and I think they um, reused the sway bar in the front because there was no reason to upgrade it since the sway bar in the front is like hella meaty and thick. So um, that should be the same, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. But um, yeah, if you did want to put um, R spec suspension, you would just need the um, lower coils and the different sway bar for the rear. But yeah i uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video like i said if you enjoyed it um feel free to leave a comment thumbs up um subscribe i don't know really anything else but if you want to see that um differential video um definitely check out my channel i'll have it posted uh here soon if it's not already up um subscribe notifications on you guys will um, get the notification whenever i do post it um but if this video is up it probably won't be too far behind it so um like i said Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Shoots.